Hey guys, welcome to makeo.org channel. In the previous videos, we have talked about started services. Started services work fine when you want to do some background task in the background and you don't want to have any interaction with the client, for example, an activity. For instance, you don't want to update your UI. For that purpose, started services are fine, but if you want to have any sort of interaction with your client, may it be the activity or maybe another service or maybe even a broadcast receiver, you want to use bound services. Also bound services are useful for when you want to bound the life cycle of your service to the client. For example, if you want your services to be alive only when the user is interacting with your application, you may want to use a bound service. Creating a bound service is a lot like a started service, you just need to create a new Java class and extend the base service class. Let's name this class example service. In here we need to extend the service class, the one that comes from android.app. The only method that is mandatory and you need to override that is unbind. I'm pressing Ctrl I in order to see this menu. Let's override that. As you can see, the return type of this method is iBinder. iBinder is an interface which facilitates the communication between the client, may it be the activity or other things, to your service. Before working on this unbind method, I'm going to create an inner class. It needs to be public public class, let's call it local binder. It needs to extend the binder class. The difference between iBinder and binder is that this binder is a class which implements the iBinder interface. This inner class needs only one method and that method needs to be public. Basically, via the help of this method and this inner class, we are going to return the service that we are currently in. So the return type would be example service class. Let's call it get service. We don't need to receive anything for this method and we just need to return example service dot this. We have set the access state of this class and this method to public so that we could have access to these two, for example, from our main activity. Beside this unbind method and this inner class, I need another member variable inside this service class, and that's going to be an iBinder. I can say private iBinder, this interface, let's call it binder, is equal to new local binder, this exact class that we just created. After that, inside the unbind method, I need to return this binder. So with the help of these three in here, this uh, iBinder, this unbind method, and this local binder class, I'm going to make the communication between this service and its client possible. Later on, we will see exactly how we are going to use them. Essentially, this is all we need in order to connect to our client, but we can have other methods inside this service as well. For example, in this simple application, I'm going to show a random number every second. We know that in Java we have uh, some class called random. Let's quickly create that. Private random, as you can see, it's coming from java.util. It's a plain Java class. Private random, let's call it random, is equal to new random. And in order to get a random number, I'm going to create a public method in here. Let's say public int get random. We don't need to receive anything. We are just going to return random.nextInt. It's just going to generate a new random number. That's all we need to do inside this example service class. We just need to declare it inside our manifest. Once again, I'm using alt plus inter in order to pop up this menu and I can use this add service to manifest. If you want to check your manifest, you can do that. As you can see inside this application tag, I have a new service. Let's also set the other attributes exported to false. As I said in the started services video, this attribute in here is just for determining that if other applications can start your service or not. By setting it to false, you won't allow other application to start your service. Let's also add a description, but as you know, we need to define this description inside our string resources. Resources, values, strings.xml let's quickly define a new string 
let's add this description to our service I can say add string service description now that we have our service we can call it or we can bind to it from inside our main activity let me minimize this project pane for now in order to bind to a service we need to create an interface called service connection and this is how you can define that I can say private service connection this interface let's call it service connection is equal to new service connection this is an interface which has two callbacks on service connected and on service disconnected as their name applies this on service connected method will be called whenever we are connected to our service and this one in here will be called whenever we disconnect from our service before everything let me finish my sentence before working on this service connection, I'm going to add two more member variables in here. The first one is a boolean, private boolean. I'm going to call it is bound. We are going to determine that if we are bound to our service or not. Let's initially define it as false. And also I'm going to create an instance of my example service class. Later on we will see that how we are going to use it. Let's say private example service. Let's call it service. And down in here, we need to initialize uh, this service. As you can see, this method is receiving two elements. The first one is a component name, which is essentially some description, some details about the service that we are going to connect to. We are not going to use it in here, but we are going to use this iBinder that has been passed to this method. Once again, this is exactly that interface that facilitates the connection between the client and the service. And the way you connect to your service is like this. You cast this iBinder to the inner class that you have created inside your service. I'm talking about this local binder in here. For doing that, we need to call our example service class dot local binder. Let's call this one binder is equal to, we need to cast it to example service dot local binder. And after that, we can say iBinder. Essentially, we are casting this iBinder to this local binder class, which is essentially returning the example service that we have created. Now that we have this inner class, we can use it in order to initialize our service. We can say service is equal to binder.getService, that public method that we have created inside that inner class. That's all we need to do, and our service is connected. One last thing that we need to do is to change the value of this boolean. This is bound to true because now we are bound to our service. I can say is bound is equal to true. Inside the second method on service disconnected, I don't need to do anything special. I just need to change the value of is bound to false. Now that we have this service connection interface, we can use it whenever we want to bind or unbind from our service. Now that we have this service connection interface, we can use it to bind to our service or in some cases unbind from our service. But determining where you want to bind or unbind from your service is up to you. If you want your service to be running even if the application is not in the foreground, the right place to bind to your service is inside this uncreate and the right place to unbind from your service is inside the undestroy method. If you want your services to be running only when the application is in the foreground, the right place to bind to your service is inside the onStart method and the right place to unbind from your service is inside the onStop method. Using the onResume and onPause method wouldn't be logical because you don't want to bind and unbind from your service whenever user receives a new notification. We know that in those cases, the application or the activity would go to on pause and whenever we come back from that notification the activity would go into on resume but in some cases you may want that behavior it's all up to you to where to bind to your service and where to unbind from your service in this application i'm going to bind to my service inside the onstart method and i'm going to unbind from it inside the onstop method so let's override those two methods i'm going to do that after this on create let's say on start inside this method i need to create an intent is equal to new intent this for the context and for the destination i can say example service dot class when we have used started services we could have called 
the start service method and we could have passed our intent but because we are going to use bind services we need to call bind service method this one in here this method requires three arguments the first of them is the intent that we just created the next one is this service connection interface that we just created let's pass that and the third argument in here is a flag probably in all cases you would pass context dot bind auto create this flag in here essentially it means that bind to the service if we are not going to that service you can check other flags if you are interested but in most cases probably you are going to use this flag that's all it takes to bind to your service and we are going to unbind from our service inside on stop method in here first of all we need to check that if we are bound to our service so we can say if is bound is equal to true and also we need to check that if our service is null or not if service is not equal to null if these two conditions are met we can say unbind service and we can pass our service connection that's all okay now that we are doing the binding and unbinding successfully it's time to use that get random method in order to show some random numbers to the user for that first of all i'm going to change my main activity layout file i'm going to add a text view seems like we have a text view let's just give an id to this text view and let's initialize it inside our main activity it's very important to understand that bound services do not create a worker thread and all the code you write will happen inside the main thread unless you change that behavior it may be confusing because in android developers official website they always keep referring to the word background and you may think that it's going to create a background thread but it's not it's your job to create another thread in this case i'm going to create an async task and inside that async task i will get different random numbers and i will update my ui let's do that down in here but before that let me minimize all this extra method okay down in here i can say private class let's call it display random async task it needs to extend the async task we don't need to receive anything so i'm going to pass void for the progress i'm going to pass integer later on we will see why and we also don't need any result let's implement the doing background i'm pressing ctrl i to pop up this menu inside this doing background method i'm going to create a for loop because i'm going to show 10 different random numbers let's say for int i is equal to 0 i less than 10 and i plus plus in order to get different random numbers from my service first of all i need to check that if is bound is equal to true and also i need to check that if my service is null or not if these two conditions are met i'm going to say publish progress and the value that i'm going to pass in here is coming from my service dot get random that method that we have created inside the example service i'm talking about this one in here after that i'm going to sleep my thread for one second for that i can say thread.sleep or alternatively i can say system clock.sleep this one in here will sleep the thread for one second let's also override the on progress update method after the super statement i'm going to update the value of this text view for that i can say text view dot set text to a string dot value of these values that we have received with an index of zero that's all we need to do inside this async task let's just call it and also let's take care of this memory leaks warning for that i'm going to create a member variable up in here of kind my async task let's say private display random async task let's call it display random async task and inside on create let's initialize that i can say display random async task is equal to new display random async task and after that i can say display random async task dot execute i don't need to pass anything just we need to override the undestroy method and cancel our async task in case we are exiting the application or in case we are destroying the activity let's say undestroy after the super statement first of all we need to check that if our async task is null or not after that we need to check that if it's not cancelled so let's say if not 
display async task dot is cancelled then cancel it display random async task dot cancel and we need to pass true for main drop if running in case you are wondering these few lines of code in here is to avoid memory leaks when you are using uh, the async task I have explained it in detail inside the async task video which you can find the link down below in the description sorry I made a mistake when I have wrote this async task and that's this line in here I need to move it to outside of my uh, if statement because if we put it inside the if statement if is bound is not true or if the service is null we are never going to come inside the if statement and we are not going to slip the thread for that reason i need to move this line of code to outside of that if statement okay our application is ready just before i test the application i'm going to ask you to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already i'm uploading new videos every day and also hit that like button if you like the video it's going to help me a lot with the youtube algorithm okay let's run our application and see if it's going to work as you can see in here we are seeing different random numbers every second that seems to work fine okay just before we finish off this video i'm going to review services once again so services are another solution to do your different tasks in the background we have two kind of services started services and bound services started services are not bound to any client for example any activity or any broadcast receiver and when you use a started service you can't have any interaction with the client for example you can't update the ui we could have defined the started service in two ways one way and the easier way was to extend the intent service class and inside the unhandled intent we could have write our task that was easy to write but we couldn't execute different tasks at the same time and simultaneously another way for defining a new started service was to extend the base service class after that we could have override the unstart command method that method would allow us to do tasks at the same time but the downside of that method was that it wouldn't create any new worker thread and you needed to take care of your worker thread yourself bound services on the other hand are bound to a client for example an activity a broadcast receiver or maybe another service and their life cycle is dependent to the life cycle of their client and also by using a bound service you can have any sort of interaction that you want with the client bound services do not create any worker thread and you need to take care of worker threads yourself okay that was a really quick review of different services in android if you want to check the source codes that i have wrote in these two videos you can find them on my website at makeo.org i will put the link to the exact source code in the description down below so make sure to check that if you need just before i finish off this video i'm going to ask you to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already and also hit that like button it's going to help me a lot with the youtube algorithm thanks for watching and see you in the next video thank you for watching i hope you enjoyed this video if you did i have 100 more hours of content like this in the format of a course on my website to this day, 30,000 students have enrolled in the course and I believe if you want to learn Android app development in a professional manner, you will check the course at makeo.org. Besides Android app development, there are a lot more courses from me and other professional instructors on the website, like Java, Python, hacking, and different kind of marketing, which you can check if you are interested. See you guys in the next video.